Good day, freshmen! This is Mom March, and we are on the last week of classes for the year 2021. So our lessons this week will focus on Module 5, the Science and Arts and the Art in Science, and Module 6, Science and Culture. So these are the last two topics for this year before we hit the Christmas vacation. So let's go on with the discussion. Alright, so this is the discussion on Gen 003 Science, Technology, and Society uh, for Module 5 and uh, Module 6, okay? So we'll start off first with Module 5, and this is the Science and Arts and the Art in Science, okay? So before we delve into further with the discussion, okay, let's have first the lesson objective. So at the end of the discussion, the students should be able to differentiate science and art, and you should also be able to describe ways how science is related to arts and uh, vice versa, okay? Now, when we talk about science and arts, okay, so yeah, we are in a world divided, okay? It has become a common belief, okay? that the huge difference between art and science means that these two extremes are you know not to be mixed with anything else say for instance religion versus science or art versus science okay however you know in some cases if you were to take a closer look okay you might find this isn't actually the case okay science and art are the very nature of human attempts to understand okay and uh, describe the world around us okay so though these subjects and methods have you know different traditions and the intended audiences are different in many cases their basic motivations and goals are you know fundamentally the same Okay, so hindi nagkakala yung si science and art, okay? I mean, if you look at it closely, they are very much related than what you know, okay? Alright. Now, uh, in truth, okay, science has been influencing art from, you know, as early as man uh, learned to draw, okay? So be it the depiction of movement, life cycles, and evolution found in ancient cave drawings and symbols okay the or the intricate the uh, science of uh, uh, communication depicted in the famous hieroglyphics of ancient egypt one you know science in this case has never been very far from the other or in the case of arts okay or arts in the case of science in this case all right so uh, a perfect example of this would be the industrial age Okay, we're in a time during which thought and concepts actually lead to design. Okay, so the art of drawing, diagrams, structural compositions, and calculations work together in harmony, all right, to bring about, okay, many of the inventions that have shape the world today so as we can see it here we have the vitruvian man by uh, leonardo da vinci okay so leonardo's famous drawings of this of the vitruvian proportions of a man's body you know first standing okay this is the first one standing standing inscribed in a square so this is standing you may may, may square kasi dyan and meron ding circle so the the when when the first uh, image or the drawing of the standing naka inscribed siya doon sa, sir, uh, sa square and then with feet and arms outspread inscribed in a circle so pagka naka arms wide open and feet wide open naka inscribed yan doon sa sa circle okay provides and this provides an excellent early example of the way in which his studies well related to Leonardo da Vinci studies of proportion fuse artistic and scientific objectives okay so it is leonardo not vitruvius okay who points out that if you open the legs so as to reduce the stature by 114 and open and raise your arms so that your middle fingers touch the line through the top of the head know that the center of the extremities of the outstretched 
outspread limbs will be the umbilicus. So this one, whether thou you are a, a man standing straight or a man will be uh, spreading his arms wide, the okay? The point of this is that the center of the body would still be the umbilicus. Okay, the center of the body would still be the umbilicus, and the space between the legs will make an equilateral triangle. The space between the legs will make an equilateral triangle. This part there. Okay, so here he provides one of his, you know, simplest illustration of a shifting center of magnitude. Okay, without a corresponding change of center of normal gravity. Okay, so this remains passing through the central line from the pit of the throat through the umbilicus and pubis between the legs. There's no change now in the center of magnitude and the center of normal gravity even if you change your position. So in this case, in the drawing of the Vitruvian man, it's still, it would still be the umbilicus which is the center of the body. Okay? Next off here, we have another creation of Leonardo da Vinci. Very, very intellectual because I said Leonardo da Vinci, okay? So this is the embryo in the womb. And his sketches of an embryo in the womb demonstrate the rigor and inquisitiveness of a scientist as well as the skill of an artist. So you can see it here that the science and art are actually intermingling with each other, okay? So da Vinci befriended, okay, the backstory of this one okay, is that Da Vinci befriended the professor of anatomy, okay, Marc Antonio de la Torre in 1506, okay, and took part in many dissections of human cadavers, including at some point around 1510, the body of a uh, heavily pregnant woman, okay. So it is thought that Da Vinci was the first person, okay, to draw a human embryo positioned accurately in the womb. Okay, positioned accurate, accurately in the wound. Okay, along with the vascular system of the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina. And at the time, it was widely believed that the, the, that the wound okay, was divided into many chambers. So, bago nagkaroon ng drawing si Da Vinci of the embryo in the womb, it was popularly believed, okay, it was widely believed that the wound okay, was divided into many chambers. Okay, but then when when Da Vinci drew this, okay, so he was the one who actually correctly drew a perfect embryo in the womb, okay, a perfect drawing of an embryo in the womb. So the embryo is shown curled up in the now familiar fetal position. So the curl up shaganyan. So just because of of his uh, observations of, of cadaver dissection, dissections, okay, so he was able to uh, paint and draw a a very good illustration of an embryo in the womb. Okay, so this is the familiar fetal position with legs crossed at the ankles and the umbilical cord clearly visible. Well, as yung umbilical cord. There you go, guys. Okay, there's the umbilical cord. Okay. Another creation, okay, another uh, very good uh, example of Da Vinci science meets art, okay, is uh, this bridge design. Okay, so Da Vinci's talent as a bridge engineer was proven only in 2001, okay. Because here's the backstory, okay. So uh, during this time, during in 2001, an equally famous artist, Vivian Sands, okay, built the Da Vinci Broen Bridge, this is the Da Vinci Broen Bridge in Norway, okay, using the artist, the artist is Leonardo Da Vinci, okay, uh, original plans for a bridge meant to, you know, stretch across the Golden Horn in Istanbul, okay. So this is the original bridge design by Leonardo Da Vinci. Uh, and then Vibjorn Sand also uh, tried to uh, create this bridge using the same materials that Leonardo da Vinci pointed out in his uh, in his drawing in his uh, in his blueprints. Okay, uh, 
mostly due to its very ambitious design. This was a very ambitious design though during the time of Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, the bridge idea was originally rejected as an architectural impossibility by the Ottoman Sultan who commissioned it. So the Ottoman Sultan commissioned this one, okay, and then Leonardo da Vinci provided the bridge design. But when the Ottoman Sultan saw this plan, okay, so he he said, "This is a this is an architectural impossibility. This cannot be done." Okay, so he rejected this idea. But then, okay, uh, the bridge was built 499 years after da Vinci skillfully skill, skillfully designed it you know, you know by uh, by Vibjorn K okay, Sand in 2001 and when the when the uh, the, the construction uh, done was done by Vibjorn Sand okay he proved okay he proved that da Vinci was totally true and correct in his design and he proved that the Sultan, the Ottoman Sultan, was wrong. Okay, so <laughs> ayaw kasi nila maniwala kay Leonardo da Vinci, eh, kasi parang they said that it was a, a very, uh, a, a very impossibility of an architectural design. Okay, it was it, it was very impossible. But you see, Leonardo da Vinci is not new when it comes to uh, intermingling science and art. Okay, he was a he was the first of many things when it comes to discoveries in science and he was a painter himself so yeah I mean it's sad to say that I mean it's it's only after 499 years that they were able to prove that this bridge design of Leonardo da Vinci was you know, was good and was true and was very much a, an architectural possibility okay that's uh, only because the Ottoman Sultan thought it was too grandiose, it was too ambitious, that he, you know, he rejected the idea. Hindi siya naniniwala kay Leonardo da Vinci. Alright? Okay. Alright, so I think that's it for Module 5. Okay, and now for Module 6, this time is about science and culture all right so before we go to the discussion of module six okay here are your learning objectives so at the end of the lesson okay or at the end of the discussion the students should be able to describe the relationship between science and culture okay and enumerate ways how science affects culture and vice versa okay so when we talk about science and culture science is actually a product of culture in some ways in many ways okay science is the comprehension of natural laws okay while technology is the application of scientific knowledge in creating products or tools that improves lives now culture in in in, in turn okay provides the social platform and shared values that bring and keep people together so science and technology are products of man's adaptation and exploration of nature through cultural practices what, what this means is that when it comes to science okay uh, culture provides the avenue okay yung kultura natin siya provide ng avenue wherein the applications of science and culture can be applied okay so the science and culture will be applied into, into a certain culture and at the same time a culture of a certain society will affect how they would approach science and technology okay so that's science and the science influencing culture and culture influencing science and vice versa okay so uh we are all okay we are all influenced by the culture in which we grew up and the societies in which we live okay so those cultures shape our expectations our values our beliefs and goals okay now sciences too are shaped by their cultures and societies okay so the way a scientist think or thinks is also being influenced by the kind of culture that that scientist has grew up with okay 
which in turn okay, would influence their work. All right. For example, a scientist may refuse to participate in certain sorts of research because you know it conflicts with his or her beliefs or values. Okay. So that's how that's how culture affects science. Because I mean, I mean, tao lang naman kasi ang mga scientists. Okay. And they have certain norms. They have certain culture. They have certain standards in which they grow up with. At mahirap tanggalin yan. Okay. Mahirap. Mahirap uh, basta, basta basta na lang i-remove ang isang kultura ng isang tao. Okay? And that greatly influenced on how they create scientific stories or scientific theories. Okay? That's, that's, uh, that, that greatly influenced how they approach a certain phenomena. Okay? So in all activities of science, including theory of evaluation or theory evaluation, scientists are influenced by cultural uh, personal factors. Yes, these factors include psychological motives and practical concerns such as, you know, intellectual curiosity and desires for self-esteem, respect from others, financial security, and power. Okay, metaphysical worldviews, which includes the foundation for some criteria used in conceptual evaluation, ideological principles, you know, about the way things should be in society, and opinions of authorities who are the authorities who are acknowledged due to expertise, personality, and or power. So these five factors, okay, interact with each other and operate in a complex social context that involves individuals, the scientific community, and, you know, all the, the, the society as a whole, okay? So, a, a certain scientist would approach, different scientists would approach a, if a single phenomena differently, okay? Because they grew up in different kinds of culture. And this and the culture that they grew up with greatly influence how they attack a phenomenon, how they they observe a phenomenon. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So this is a diagram on how a culture affects science. So in in science, okay, uh, science create questions. So paano papasok si culture? Jack. Science is impacted by the culture of the scientists okay and when when culture affects the way of thinking of a scientist it can have a unique influence on the creativity and the imagination of that scientist okay so your creativity and your imagination of some scientist will be greatly affected or will be greatly influenced by the culture he or she grew up with and when this when, when this is the case, okay, this can result in generating even more questions. Kasi ano nga ba kasi ang fundamental idea when it comes to science? It's the endless questions in our universe. It's the endless questions on the different phenomena. And when you have a certain type of culture, okay, it can have an impact on the way you think and the way you become creative. And that can result in generating even more questions. Okay. Now, science and culture. Okay, so these are just um, descriptions. Okay, science is part of culture, and how well science is done, and largely depends on the culture in which it is practiced. Sabi ko kanina, kung ano yung kultura ng isang scientist, yun makaka affect yun sa kung paano siya magisip at kung paano siya mag mag magisip ng mga creative ideas. The interaction among different cultures stimulated creativity through new ways of thinking and new paradigms for the observation of nature. Kaya kung nagsama-sama ang mga iba't ibang sciences na, magka, na nanggaling sa iba't ibang kultura, okay? I mean, if they come together, uh, people, if they, if they group together people from different cultures and they try to integrate you know the, their way of thinking and their way of attacking a certain phenomena okay well wow it will you know it will stimulate creativity through new ways of thinking okay science has had an increasingly strong influence on the european culture okay so in the 19th century the buzzword for science was order okay scientists have discovered that the movement of the stars 
is predictable in that all terrestrial and celestial phenomena follow the same scientific laws like clockwork. Okay, so to, na, na discover nila during that time that uh, stars are predictable, that the movement of stars are predictable. They believe, according to the Galilean vision, that the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics with characters represented by geometric objects. So, dito papasok si math. Okay, kaya nga, during the time of uh, Galileo, they are very fond on using symbols, uh, Greek symbols, okay? Ma omega, something like that, okay? Theta, okay? The, the, the different symbols, all right? And the mission of science was to discover the laws of nature and thereby explain all natural phenomena. So this faith in science, okay, gave rise to the philosophical movement called positivist, positivism, okay, which led to a widespread trust in science and technology and influenced social theory, okay? So even after positivism fade, faded out, here comes Charles Darwin, okay, with the theory of ev evolution. It in, and it still influenced social phenomena, most notoriously eugenics and racism. So the faith in the possibilities offered by scientific progress still shapes the beliefs and actions of people today. In fact, expressions such as this has been, quote-unquote, this has been scientifically demonstrated are often used to cut short a discussion. So, basing on the, the discoveries of uh, Galileo and, you know, the uh, European culture in the 19th century, okay, they, they made an impression that greatly, uh, you know, gr greatly shows how reliable science during the time is, okay? Kaya nga pag sinabing, this, was, this has been scientifically demonstrated, ibig sabihin, wala na, tapos na ang usapan. Na-proven na, na scientifically na eh. Parang gano'n ang, parang gano'n ang connotation. Okay? Next, originality, independence of thought, and dissent are characteristics of the culture, okay, uh, of the scientific culture, and therefore a challenge, okay, to established uh, cultural values. So the safeguards for uh, independence are free inquiry, free thought, free speech, okay, tolerance, and the willingness to arbitrate disputes on the basis of evidence. So these values are not important for science itself, but have, you know, have had a strong influence on the development of today's democratic and free societies. Okay, so the success of science and the use of scientific knowledge have. You know, profoundly changed everyday life, mainly in developed countries. So life expectancy has increased strikingly and cures are available for many diseases. Okay, so agricultural productivity has increased to match demograph demographic uh, uh, developments and technology has freed humankind from arduous labor. So new methods of communication, information, handling, and um, Computation have brought unprecedented opportunities and challenges. So these discoveries or inventions have radically changed our way of describing the natural world and have influenced our everyday life. Okay, so today even the organization of society itself owes much to scientific thinking. It just says, I mean, it's, it just says that. Uh, the development of societies, the development of cultures also greatly influenced by the application of scientific thinking. So, if we have discovered a lot of um, uh, theories and discoveries, okay, and we applied it into a certain culture, okay, that culture will totally change. Okay, mag yung kultura na yan, okay? And based on that application to culture, okay, uh, science now has a form of an evaluation. So, nag, nag, nag sila ng mga theories and discoveries. And they applied that to the culture that they have. Now, based on how the culture will behave after the application of such discovery or such, such uh, theory, okay, my basis ngayon sa science 
for evaluation. Ah, sabihin niya, ah, hindi pala maganda sa kultura ito, okay? So, kailangan natin baguhin. Kailangan natin ulit ng mag-isip ng panibagong uh, creative uh, thought. Okay? So, that's how science also influence culture. Alright? And vice versa. Culture affects science. Whatever the culture a person may have will greatly affect his imagination, his creative thinking. Alright? Okay. And I think that concludes, alright, my discussion. Oh, not yet. Okay. So, this is, uh, this, uh, let me just share to you some quotes, okay, from... Uh, two people, John F. Kennedy. Okay, science contributes to our culture in many ways as a creative intellectual activity in its own right, as the light which has served to illuminate man's place in the universe and as the source of understanding of man's own nature. Okay, that's how science contributes to our culture. Okay. And we also have another quote from uh, Martin Rees, okay? So, science is a part of culture, okay? Indeed, it is the only truly global culture because protons and proteins are the same all over the world. And it's the one culture we can all share, which is true. Tama nga naman. We may come from different uh, parts of the globe. We may come from different cultures. But when we talk of science, it unifies us all. Nagiging isa tayo, despite the, the different kinds of culture that we may have. When we talk about science, it becomes, you know, it, it unifies us. Okay? Yes, okay, so, yeah, and that concludes my discussion for Module 5 and Module 6 of Gen 003, Science, Technology, and Society. I hope you have learned a lot in this lesson on science and arts and science and culture thank you very much for watching the video guys i wish you the best on the holidays and a very prosperous new year to come have a great day ahead guys goodbye